Okay, here we have a 97 ST 1100 by Honda. We are going to do the rear pads without doing the brake fluid change, okay? Uh, there is some people that get really bent out of shape over it. If your brake fluid is good or if you flush it regularly or whatever, it, you're fine. So don't worry about it. Um, this is just going to be one where it's, we're just changing the pads only. First thing you got to do, you have a lock uh, you got a cap in here and that locks the piston or the caliper pin from coming out and also seals moisture and stuff from getting in the threads. This takes a slotted screwdriver. You take this out. Yours may be very hard to get out. I broke this loose already. Just a little cap right there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and zoom in here so you can get a better view what's going on what I'm doing so I just took the cap out here now I'm putting a five millimeter Allen or hex key in here and I am taking out the caliper pin okay so we are taking out the caliper pin now And this is actually a little long-winded, but not too bad. All right, so there it looks like it's past the threads. All right, so now the caliper pin has been backed out here. Grab a hold of it. You might need pliers, like I might need pliers to uh, grab a hold of that pin. And it's pretty simple. Uh, this pin you'll also want to clean up just a little bit. A little anti seize on it. All right, so here we are. We're wiggling the pin out. Hopefully, you can see this. All right, so there is a the caliper pin. And you want to make sure it doesn't have grooves or anything like that cut in it. Once you got the caliper pin out, this is actually pretty easy. Grab the pad. All right, and I did it again. All right, uh, this is the one part I, I, I get sidetrack sometimes when I'm doing the videos and this is compressing the piston back in all right now I prefer to press only on the actual pad and as you pry this back what you're doing is the piston back here you are compressing this and getting it back in to the back inside so this one's actually being a little bit stubborn here there she goes now you can say what you want but there's multiple dust caps and stuff in here and I'm not necessarily pressing as it might look like against a rotor because a rotor the back of this has the pad on the back. So I am actually putting the pressure between the pad and the piston and the caliper. So I'm not actually bending the rotor, even though it might look like it. As long as the rotor is on the vehicle and the caliper is on the vehicle, which you're compressing back, it's just the, comp it's just the piston. All right. you can see that goes back quite a ways now a lot of people and and if I had brake fluid I'm actually out of brake fluid right now if I had brake fluid I would have cracked this bleeder and when I compressed that back I would have uh, hooked a little tube tube onto this bleeder right here you can open that up and then when you compress this back the fluid will go back into a, another container and then you fill up the uh, brake reservoir with clean fluid and when you pump it up that clean fluid comes back up and replaces it in your lines. Alright, now you see how I did that? Just grab it, pull it out. Simple, super simple. Alright, so this one here you can see there's nothing left on it. You see how thin that is? And the inside caliper, 
or an inside pad. Sorry about this. Uh, same thing. Just pull it out. Now, the new one, take a look at this. This is the part number. These are the good ones. FA196HH. These are the more expensive ones. These are the ones with a lot of metal in them, and they wear better. All right. So, what we're going to do is we will clean off our our caliper pin clean that off which I just did now we will add at least what I do is I have uh, I have some anti-seize so I actually add a little anti-seize to this that keeps this from wearing because that's a wear point uh, the pistons and stuff you know the calipers riding back and forth on this I am just not doing very good on language, but I'm not going to restart this video. English is hard sometimes. All right. So now you can see the difference. We have our nice new pad, and you can see how thick this is. You can see that the other one is completely worn out. All right. See that? So what I usually do is I take a tiny bit of this anti-seize, and there are contact points, and the contact points are here, and then just right here, and that's where the spring rides. So I put a little bit of anti-seize there. Now Harley and stuff actually recommends a little bit on the back here uh, between the piston, but not much. You don't want to use much. You don't want this stuff getting all over the place and everything, and I, I prefer the anti-seize because it tends to dry up now, there's one, and then we will do the second one here, a little bit of painting going on here. I put a little bit there, and a little bit where the spring rides there, there we go. That's all you need, just a tiny, tiny bit, and then of course on the pin. Now, here's the trick when you put them back in. You're going to go one at a time. So you're going to take the outboard pad first. All right. Let's see if I can get, get a better view for you here. So I'm going to take the outboard pad first. And I'm going to slide this in. All right. And it's going to drop in. Shoot anyway. Oops. I didn't get the back, back piston compressed. Not all the way anyway. All right. Oh, that's good. Okay. Just had to move the thing around. All right, so now you slide this in here and it will fall into the groove in the back. All right. And once you get it there, you're going to actually take the caliper pin and you're gonna line it up see this is a spring and that's why I put a little bit of lubricant right there you're just gonna go through a little bit and you're gonna push this back in ah see I did not get that back one pushed all the way in retract it all the way back in which is fine this is this is good this is learning you know it's a little bit different when you're doing these videos and you're trying to trying to help people out and then you uh, you get a little sidetracked and you lose your space all right so I'm putting the old pad back in here now see you can see the second piston all the way down there I gotta compress them both back I only got the one compressed so I'm using the screwdriver again. Get that to move. And it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. You know, you have to get in there and work the work the pistons back and forth. There it goes. And they never like to go back right away. And once you get it back there, you know, twist the screwdriver so you get a wider bite and work that work that piston back in. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
Now, now you can see down in here, both pistons are completely retracted now. And now I can go ahead and do my brake job. Drop this in here. And it's going to line up to the spring. Push the caliper back in. And this should move. If this doesn't move freely, you need to lube this pin. And I probably will do that here on this video because that's how that thing moves back and forth. Well, actually, you know what? I've had this wheel off several times with tires, so I know it's good. I'm not going to do it. But you can take this off and you can take that pin out. You can lube it. But this is just doing a pad change. That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing all the other stuff with it. So I got the pin started on the first one. I'm holding it still. Now you take the second pad. I got the little bit of lubricant on there. And this slides in here. See how I use the use the wheel a little bit to let that go in there. And then once that goes in, then you go ahead, put your ratchet back on there. And that way you can get a little pressure on it. And there it just went through both pads. Now you screw it back together. Here we go with your pin. Okay, caliper pin going in there. Don't get crazy on this, just snug it up, okay? You just want it snugged up. And then the last thing you got is that little cap your little locking cap. So take this little locking cap, put this thing in here, tighten it down, make sure that's good and snug, but not, not crazy because this thing will, if you get it super tight, you're not gonna be able to get it back off, it'll strip. All right, that is all it takes to do the brake pads on an ST1100. Last thing, come over here. Pump up your brakes. Oh, look at that pedal goes all the way down. Slowly. And hard pedal. There we go. That's it. Thanks for watching and hope this helps you guys out.